Coming up on today's episode, we'll bring you new updates on the Sinclair broadcasting controversy. Also, how algorithms are affecting what you see on Facebook and Google. All this and more on today's episode of The Report Program. Hello and welcome to another special edition of The Report Program. I'm Michael Patterson. Hello, I'm Alyssa Freider. This program is produced and created by the Broadcast Journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. As technology evolves, the way we consume news also evolves. But what does this mean for the newspaper industry? We go to reporter Maricela Perez for more. The traditional way our grandparents and parents used to receive their news was through a newspaper. But now millennials have a different way of gathering their news. Let's find out how. I basically just find out on social media. Um, I follow like Time Magazine and uh, Business uh, Economics. It's the Instagram page that I find. And LinkedIn. Since the invention of the internet, the television, and other handheld technology, the newspaper industry has been obligated to adapt. In order to cater to the millennials, the newspapers have abandoned their traditional methods and have become more innovative and digital. The board allows me to select from a bunch of different publications. So I guess the way I gather my news is mostly from uh, online publications, Huffington Post, you know, things like that. I usually gather my news, I wouldn't, not from social media, but like online. So I guess when I like check my email from Yahoo News or, um, yeah, basically online. In a recent study, the Pew Research Center discovered that 46% of Americans prefer to watch their news, 35% read it, and 17% would rather listen to it. According to a Nielsen Scarborough study, more than 169 million American adults still read the newspaper in different formats like print, website, and mobile. 81% of those 169 million Americans still read the print format. 24% of those readers are millennials. The question is, will the newspaper industry survive the internet? This is Maricela Perez reporting for the report program. Sinclair Broadcast Group may be the most influential media company, but their local domination may lead consumers down a dangerous path. Our reporter Ryan Matthew has more. This is extremely dangerous to our this democracy. This is extremely dangerous to this our democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our this democracy. This is extremely dangerous to our democracy. News anchors at local TV stations across the country all recited the same script on their broadcasts. These stations all have the commonality of being owned by Sinclair Broadcast Group. Sinclair Broadcast Group is the largest owner of local television stations in the nation and is en route to getting bigger. A nearly $4 billion deal to buy Tribune Media and its stations is giving Sinclair ownership of a total of 233 television stations nationwide. This poses a threat to millions of audience members as Sinclair is notorious for injecting their conservatively biased views into their broadcasts. In a study performed by Gregory J. Martin and Josh McCrane of Emory University, Sinclair-owned stations' coverage patterns were compared to those of other stations in the same market, where it was revealed Sinclair increases its coverage of national politics by 25%, decreases its coverage of local politics by 10%, and shifts significantly rightward in its coverage's ideological slants. CSUF communications professor Holly Ocasio-Rizzo explains how this may affect the audiences of Sinclair-owned stations. Some audiences may not um, recognize the separation between news and editorializing or opinion. That's where the danger comes in. From a journalistic perspective, Ocasio Rizzo believes pairing opinion pieces with nightly news may not be ethically moral. We want people to make their own decisions. We don't want to tell them how to think. To be giving them an opinion pieces with the nightly broadcast news, that's a little bit extreme. In the end, Ocasio Rizzo believes media consumers have a responsibility when consuming news. People are time pressed right now, and they have been for decades. That means that you've got to be efficient about your information consumption. You have to pick credible news sources. For the report program, I'm Ryan Maffey. The organization is set to merge with Tribune Media as early as July of 2018. 
Now, is bad press considered good press? We go to our reporter Courtney Bowe to find out more. The way we consume media has advanced. Physical newspapers are declining since everything is available for free online. These changes brought about a new form of publicity like going viral or bad press. We go to Chelsea Reynolds with more. I think most people today consume news on the internet, which is a non-traditional mode of news consumption. And many professional news organizations that have existed for the past century are now pivoting to do video um, and social media uh, you know, to target younger audiences. So I think that's where everybody's getting their news now. As younger audiences share an event online, it gains popularity, causing it to go viral. With that understanding, some celebrities try to get any media coverage they can, whether it is good or bad. When we think of people like Donald Trump and Milo Yiannopoulos and even people like Kanye West, we think of them as being bad at PR, but in reality, we're talking about these people every day. Recently, Kanye West stirred up controversy on Twitter, causing social media to go wild. The next day, he dropped a new song. I asked students whether this publicity stunt made them excited for his upcoming album or not. So after hearing Kanye say that slavery was a choice, um, I, don't, I would not support his music. I wouldn't support um, anything he has coming out, actually. Um, it's just, he didn't, he didn't think before he spoke. It's not really something you should have said at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Kanye is someone who thrives on controversy, obviously. Um, I don't think his end goal is to create good press for himself. The saying, there's no such thing as bad publicity, stands truer today than ever before. The more people talk about an individual's controversy, the more they are known online. This has been Courtney Bowe. Reporting for the report program. With newspapers out the door, many people are relying on social media to gather their news. Reporter Leslie Duarte has more on the story. Read all about it. For the past 15 years, the newspaper industry has seen a decline in print journalism. The evolution of the internet and technology have changed how people consume news. A major way newspapers meet their profit is through advertising. However, between 2000 and 2015, print newspaper advertising revenue fell from about $60 billion to $20 billion. So where is this money going? In 2016, the New York Times reported a revenue fall of 19% for the quarter, while at the same time, Facebook announced that their digital advertising revenue rose 59%. It appears that more and more people are turning to social media for news consumption. Students at Cal State Fullerton also agree with that. How do I consume news? Through my phone. That's, yeah, that's the only way. In the last few years, more people rely on platforms like Facebook or Twitter instead of print journalism. Many experts say that the print journalism is slowly fading away because it simply cannot keep up with the changing times. However, that does not mean that the institution themselves are in trouble. As times change in the media and news consumption, viewers will continue to get their news from online resources rather than print. This is, of course, until the industry can find a new way to take back their readers. I'm Leslie Duarte for The Report. Back to you in the studio. Traditional print journalism is quickly being converted into online sites. However, those online news sites are now being replaced by social media. Our reporter Corey Mack has more. News today is consumed a little differently than it was generations ago. Traditional newspapers have been long replaced by the internet where sites such as Facebook and Twitter have dominated the way we consume news. Journalism professor Frank Russell has this to add. The younger the audience is, the more likely um, they are to use social media as their main source of news. Consumers looking for news now look to the trending tabs on social media. What their family uh, was doing. And so Facebook changed the proportion from 5% news to 4% news. That doesn't sound like a big change from the user's perspective, but a lot of news sites found that their traffic dropped dramatically because that's 20% less news 
on Facebook. With changes in how news is presented, stories will be prioritized differently than before. Professor Russell also concludes with the risks of these new platforms. We need to be there, but we also need to be aware of the risks of relying too heavily on platforms that we don't control. NBC and News TV reporter Tyra Majors felt confident about these changes. I think the applications such as Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter are what people are going towards now, but I don't think that they should stray away from those traditional sites like New York Times and LA Times. Even with the shift into the online and mobile world, journalists will continue to find new ways to deliver news to consumers. Unlike generations past, social media apps are the leaders in what kind of news we are exposed to today. And with journalism continuing to change, how will we consume news in the future to come? I'm Corey Mack for The Report Program. Coming up after the commercial break, a new change coming to Instagram. And is Snapchat taking over journalism? Welcome back to the report program. Carlos Andrade reports on how social media is changing the news trends and the future of news consumption. Close your eyes and hear all the noise you run into in your daily life. 67% of U.S. adults get at least some news on social media. News is observed from all around us. It is like New York City, it just never sleeps. Yet, how we consume this information is what is stirring the pot. Newer news outlets like podcasts and commercial marketing on all media platforms are growing business exponentially. With 77% of Americans having a smartphone and 82% of that population using social media, we're all cell phone conscious in our daily lives. Um, so I'm one of those old people who loves Facebook, but on the other hand, I teach communication, so I have to keep up with the latest and greatest. So I use Snapchat a lot. Um, I use Instagram I'll, probably way more than anything else. Yet Americans are losing trust in any information given from any social media platform we view today. Overall, all online news outlets are losing credibility which is why the new trend is fact-checking, which leads to learning more in depth on the subject. This has been Carlos Andrade for the report program. So Lissa, as we talked about on the show last week, everyone uses social media. So for you, how much of your social media usage is news related? Actually, I use social media generally just for professional usage. So almost all of my uh, social media usage is just to get news, keeping up on all of my news sources as well as sports, things like that. So pretty much all of my social media usage is just for news. What about you? Likewise. I like to kind of limit the distractions. You know, memes are great and all that kind of stuff, but I like to try and stay focused. Yeah, same here. With the rapid growth of smartphones, people have all the information in the world at their fingertips. However, when it comes to gathering information, what type of medium does the modern generation use? Hibba Berry reports. Living in a fast-paced world, news is a 24-7 cycle. However, when news breaks, how do we consume it? We can obtain all sorts of information at our fingertips thanks to smartphones, but through which mediums do people inform themselves? Well, they have three options, print, broadcast, or digital. I still think that you kind of have to be online now, and that's why we're seeing a lot more news move online, because it's instantaneous, people want news 24-7, and so you still need to have that online presence. On ESPN, you have people that are writing, but then you also, they're doing podcasts, and they're also doing sports center hits, and so I think that it's becoming, in this like media environment, more and more important to have the skills to do all of them, even if you are still like choosing to specialize in one. I've been working with Titan TV for the last four years, it's made me really appreciative of broadcast because there are tons of different outlets for you to go. Like at Titan TV, we have shows that focus on music, entertainment, sports, hard news, technology, that sort of stuff. So it gives you all these different outlets and it allows um, students to realize that there are so many different opportunities for them, both 
in front of the camera as a producer, as a writer, whereas print, you're a little more restricted. You're just going to be writing. And here you're learning a variety of different skills, which are really going to help you later on in life. According to the Pew Research Center, news is consumed mainly from broadcast and digital outlets. Tusk Magazine layout designer Megan Maxey thinks otherwise about traditional print journalism. I think that um, when people say print journalism, they think it's just a newspaper or it's just a magazine, but it's not. It's really the online and multimedia aspect as well. It's all in one. People say that print journalism is dying, and I say, no, it's not dying, it's changing. So if particularly newspaper newsrooms innovate, then they can still be relevant and they can stay alive because people still read the news. Whichever way news is consumed, its important sources remain credible. Reporting in Fullerton, this has been Hibba Berry for the report program. As online news trends take over the media landscape, tech companies like Facebook and Google alter what you see on algorithms. But are these tools changing the way we interact with news and access information? Reporter Tamika Adams has more. As traditional news providers lose popularity, the web has become the go-to source for information and news. With Google and Facebook, carving out territory as key providers. But do these platforms have too much power? I spoke with Professor Frank Russell, who specializes in research of how Silicon Valley and tech companies impact journalism. I would say, and there's a lot of research to back this up, that there are more gatekeepers than ever. So all of us are gatekeepers in a way, whereas journalists used to have almost a monopoly on gatekeeping. We were the only people who really had the authority within society, other than government itself or pow other powerful institutions, to go ask them for information. And then we decided what information was important enough to share with the public. Today though, with everyone having access to information and access to these tools, all of us can work as gatekeepers. Google and Facebook, in a way, actually now are the most powerful gatekeepers in our society. Um, and it's important to realize that it's not just um, what, uh, what people at Google, how they want to behave as gatekeepers, or how people at Facebook want to behave as gatekeepers. Tech companies use sophisticated methods like algorithms to decide what you see. Facebook's newest update worries some, saying that information and news will get lost in the cracks, leaving some internet users in the dark. Tech companies like Google and Facebook will continue to do the gatekeeping of your news and information, whether you know it or not. I'm Tamika Adams with The Report Program. One of the newest trends in media is sponsored content. This is the idea that ads must be labeled whether they are endorsements or sponsored on Instagram. I investigated more on the topic. One of the biggest trends in today's media world is sponsored content. What is that, you might ask? Let's just say you're scrolling through Instagram and all of a sudden you see this. A post that looks like an ad. Well, that's because it's sponsored content. The newest way to advertise is by sponsoring social media posts as well as articles in newspapers. Benji Toby, an advertising major here at CSUF, explains why this trend has become so popular among advertisers. Uh, so I think a lot of the time advertisers now are starting to move away from traditional media and they're uh, really relying on things like native advertising and influencers and sponsored posts and stuff like that just because it's so hard to grab attention nowadays and people can easily skip through ads or they just don't pay attention to them at all. Although advertising isn't a new concept, telling consumers that you're advertising to them is. The Federal Trade Commission has established rules when advertising in social media and in articles in newspapers. This guide has made it mandatory for bloggers, journalists, and advertisers to label when they are either advertising something or they are being paid to endorse a product. Yeah, just make it known that it, it's sponsored and that someone paid to have this put in place instead of it being like an organic piece of content. This new trend has also been extended to print journalism. Dr. Gail Love explains. Basically, sponsored content or native advertising is content that looks like editorial content, but is in fact sponsored. This is presenting 
an opportunity for print media to regain some of the revenue that they have lost. Consumers can now decide whether or not they want to keep reading or watching that ad. As for the print journalism and advertisement industries, we'll just have to wait and see where this new trend will take them. I'm Alyssa Freider for the Report Program. Reading the paper on Sunday morning was a common way people received their news. But due to the evolution of technology, newspapers are forced to reinvent themselves. Brenda Gonzalez reports. Sunday mornings, people would receive their newspaper at their doorstep. It included local, national, and sometimes even coupon. Now, things have changed. What better place to find out what is it that millennials are using to gather their news than at CSUF? I gather my news through social media and like watching the news like on TV. And what accounts do you use the most? Uh, I use Twitter and here and there I'll use Facebook, but not really that much. According to the American Press Institute, millennials are drawn to news that is recommended to them by their peers. Social media is also exposing millennials to news through the use of their social media. 88% of millennials are gathering their news from Facebook. Um, for the most part, I gather my news from social media um, and from watching the news on TV. And what, account, and what social media accounts do you use the most? Uh, probably Twitter. Yeah. I went out to my social media account and I created a survey to find out what is it that my users are using to get their news. Here are the results. Survey, more of my users use social media. And contrary to CSU students, my users use Facebook the most to gather their news. And lastly, majority of them use the television rather than the newspaper. So I use social media, but I also have the CNN app on my phone. So I actually occasionally read an article or two on the app, like usually two to three articles a week. And on your social media accounts, which ones do you use the most? Uh, Twitter. Okay. Use to share, spread, and deliver at the very moment it comes out. We no longer need this. Things have changed now with social media. People can just open up their apps and they'll be informed. This is Brendan Gonzalez with the CSEF Student Report. So Alyssa, looking at the last package and seeing those surveys, it seems that no one's really reading the newspaper. How about you? How are your news consumption trends uh, affecting by technology? Um, you know, as a kid, I remember uh, every Sunday, like, going out and getting that L.A. Times paper, and my mom would come in, and we would just read it together, and, you know, now you don't even get a physical newspaper anymore. I read uh, the L.A. Times on the Internet or on my phone. All my uh, apps are on my phone now. I can just easily read the news through there. What about you? You know, I, like you, also gain a lot of my news from technology-based sources, but I might be a little old-fashioned. I kind of like reading the paper every once in a while, drinking my coffee while I wake up, but that's just me. The future of journalism is digital, and a social media outlet has taken a new approach to presenting the news by using Snapchat. Reporter Michael Patterson takes a look at this new medium to see if it's the future of journalism. In recent years, the traditional media landscape has made a drastic shift to creating more digital content to keep up with the emergence of social media. Less and less consumers of news media are picking up the paper or turning into the nightly news. While some organizations have turned to social media platforms like Twitter and Instagram, others like NBC have moved to a more unorthodox medium, Snapchat. In July of 2017, NBC News launched a Snapchat-based news show titled Stay Tuned, a twice-daily news show that recaps the latest in current events. In the show's short lifetime, it has amassed 4 million subscribers and draws tens of millions of viewers every month. More importantly, however, is that the show is reaching a younger audience that has mostly been unreachable. It's very hard, for instance, to get something to be viral and to be passed around on Snapchat because it's hard to share posts and most posts disappear within 24 hours. So it encourages, I think, a type of authenticity. I think it is where a lot of young people get news or get information these days because they can put together a lot of these different little short clips, photos and videos, and they live for about a day, which is maybe what the news cycle should be on some of this stuff. 
it pushes back against the idea that if you post something online, even if your company created it, that it should live there forever. You can sort of like enjoy it for a day when, it, when it's relevant and then it goes away. And I think that's really innovative. With NBC Stay Tuned perhaps becoming the next big thing in journalism, it is certainly possible to see more news reports like this one showing up on Snapchat in the future. Reporting for the report program on Snapchat, I'm Michael Patterson. Can traditional TV and print compete with the increase in usage of mobile devices and social media? Brock Howard has more details. Digital news and social media continues to grow, with mobile devices rapidly becoming one of the most common ways for Americans to get news. The gap between television and online news consumption is narrowing. According to a report found by Pew Research Center, as of 2017, 43% of Americans report often getting news online which is just 7 percentage points lower than the 50% who often get news on TV. CSUF student Miguel Betrado shares his thoughts on news consumption in today's digital age. It's, it's more convenient and you get to kind of customize what you're reading, that, who you're following, what websites you go to, where you get your news. Like, so you have more choice. Like back then, we used to watch TV, whatever's on TV, that's the news you get, or the newspapers. But like now we have so many options. You know who you following so you know what kind of news you're going to get. The use of mobile devices for news continues to grow. As of spring 2017, 45% of U.S. adults often get news on a mobile device, which is a 24% increase since 2013, when it was just 21%, according to Pew Research Center. Another CSUF student, Jose Abindez, talks about how he finds out what's happening in the news. The way I find out about news is through my phone, mainly like Twitter and stuff. It's like a trending page and it shows like hashtags and what's trending during the day. And that's usually how I find out about like news or, like around the world and stuff, like when a natural disaster happens or like when like a celebrity dies or something. Uh, on Twitter, I follow like an ESPN and they like they tweet about like athletes and who are, like getting traded or like what's going on in each team. And also, I follow like uh, ABC Seven News that has like local news around the area, and they tweet about like what's, what news is going around us. With the increase of news consumption through mobile devices and through social media platforms, is the traditional TV news and newspaper format on the verge of extinction? This is Brock Howard from The Report Program. Well, that's all the time we have today for The Report Program. Stay tuned for more news, views, and info. I'm your host, Michael Patterson. And I'm Alyssa Freider. Thanks for watching. Stay fresh, Fullerton. It's pretty great. The yeah. funny thing about news